Joining me now, Bonson Group, Chief Investment Officer, Founding and Managing Partner, author of There's No Free Lunch, 250 Economic Truths, David Bonson. David, we're looking ahead to Bank of America and Goldman Sachs out before the bell this morning. What are you expecting, David? Good morning. Well, good morning. It's actually been a mixed bag because, as you said, J.P. Morgan, BlackRock, Morgan Stanley all missed last week. Then you had a really kind of encouraging number from Citi. It was frankly surprising. We're not used to Citi actually outperforming expectations. Um, and so I suspect it's not going to be a monolithic response where all financial firms respond the same way. I think some are going to have better news, some are going to have worse. What we know is going to be bad, Dagan, is uh, investment banking activity is going to be way down because last year you had a huge amount of M&A and buying and selling and activity, and that activity is totally dried up. What is your outlook broadly for stocks given the kind of lower uh, percentage of companies that are beating expectations here? Well, first of all, 7% is nothing. I mean, it's just only a few financial firms that have reported, but I do think there will end up being a lot who don't beat earnings. We've had an above average amount beating earnings, and I think that's going to come down. However, I would be very careful about reading too much into it in terms of how listeners are investing, because the problem is they don't know how much has already been priced in. Earnings can come down, earnings season can disappoint, but perhaps that's a big part of why the market's already down over 20%. So I do expect earnings season to be more muted. We've had some real good ones. We're due for a disappointing one, but how much stocks react, it's tough to say. The market was up 650 points last Friday. Futures are up big this morning. Um, I don't think that uh, investors want to totally change their portfolio on bad news that we've already known about. Fed officials preparing to lift interest rates by another 75 basis points or 0.75 percentage points. Inflation's still hot. The Fed is going to have to get aggressive, 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 regardless of investors in stocks and crypto and all these other assets wringing their hands about losses. Well, certainly the Fed couldn't care less about crypto investors, nor should they. Anything ranks speculation. I don't really believe that ultimately the Fed will end up not caring about housing and stocks because I think they have a 30-year history of coddling risk asset holders. But for now, the headline is, oh, we have to go fight inflation. The problem is the Biden administration policies on energy are a far bigger cause of inflation than anything the Fed can do with the interest rate. They can raise interest rates to 4% tomorrow. It's not going to get the oil pumps going in Florida, or excuse me, in, in Texas and Oklahoma and things like that. So I do think we have a supply side driven inflation problem that the Fed has to act as if they're doing something about, but their hands are mostly tied until we get a better national energy policy. Ultimately, the Fed will raise rates 75 basis points at uh, the next meeting, and they will continue leaking to people like our friend Nick, and, and the futures market is totally pricing this in already. David's 100% right. We have a supply side problem, but they could have started to tamp down demand over a year ago. David, final word. Yeah, I think that the stuff they've done with housing is totally reckless, totally irresponsible, and for no great purpose. It didn't do anything for economic stimulus. So I think that um, Mitch is exactly right. They needed to get ahead of this, and they haven't. And the biggest impact has been its distorted prices, which means now we have to undistort, which creates pain for people. That's what we're going through right now.